Permian Basin, Texas, the 1950s. Oil production was declining. The black gold in West Texas seemed to be drying up. To understand why, we need to know something about how oil is produced. The weight of overlying rock and fluids creates pressure in the oil reservoir. That pressure is key to forcing the oil to the surface. In the oil patch, that's known as primary recovery. The beginning of primary recovery is just letting the reservoir do what it can. It's down there, it's under pressure when we start. Eventually, the pressure drops low enough that we have to start pumping it. Primary recovery can produce about 10 to 20 percent of the oil in the reservoir. In the 1950s, oil companies learned how to use water to get even more oil out of the ground. Secondary recovery uh, was invented about 60 years ago, and that usually employs injecting water into the oil and gas reservoir, which will raise the pressure back up and force more oil out of the reservoir. Secondary recovery can produce another 10 to 20 percent of the original oil in place. Starting in about the mid-1950s, most of our major fields were put under water flood. By the late 1960s, probably just about every one of our major fields was already in water flood. With water injection in place, West Texas oil was flowing again. But water injection did not work everywhere. In the early 70s, the Railroad Commission was looking at one of our big fields on the east side of the basin and said, you know, that we're worried about the future of this field. So they devised a scheme to run it into a specialized recovery technique that would then get a great deal of the oil out. The technique was novel at the time, but it was CO2. Oil field operators found just enough CO2 byproduct from a nearby natural gas processing plant to give CO2 a try. CO2 was selected because there was some laboratory tests that showed it to be a method by which you could change the properties of the oil in the formation. Thin it up, basically, and loosen it from the rock, if you will, and swell it. That's really the definition of an enhanced oil recovery process, that one that changes the properties of the oil allows you to recover more of it. The CO2 worked. Now the Texas oil men needed a long-term stable supply of CO2 to take oil production to the next level. The oil companies needed a very large and very reliable source of CO2 for their oil fields. And so in the late 70s and early 80s, they went about systematically developing some geologic sources that had nearly pure CO2 in them. The closest CO2 sources that are large sources are in northern New Mexico or southern Colorado. So there are, are large pipelines which bring over a billion cubic feet of gas a day to the Permian Basin for our CO2 floods. Once it's to the big oil fields where that they wanted to CO2 flood, they then developed a distribution system to inject the CO2. So we've had a history of 20, 25 years now with plenty of CO2. During CO2 EOR, some of the CO2 comes back with the oil. When you CO2 flood, we leave in that reservoir about 60% of the CO2. We only get back about 40%. Then we strip that out of the oil and gas and put it back in the ground. But that means that we're constantly buying new CO2 in our CO2 floods. CO2 enhanced oil recovery was like discovering new oil without drilling new wells. One billion barrels of oil has now been produced as a result of CO2 flooding. And we anticipate in the future that we may see another 10 billion barrels of oil in the Permian Basin produced by the additional tertiary recovery using CO2 flood. <laughs>